Divorce is already hard enough, but if you're like me, sometimes what's even harder is talking to your kids after divorce. So if you're going through a divorce or you already are divorced and you're wondering about how do you talk to these kids and how do you maintain a strong relationship, well, sometimes that can really feel impossible. I want to be real with you and share my own story of my own experience with divorce and my kids and how after two years of no contact with my son, who I love deeply, I finally heard from him. This is one of the best days of my life in the last two years. I can't even think about it without getting emotional. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I'm James Burnham, and I am a fear coach. I teach people how to use fear as a guide, not a blunt instrument of survival. And I want to show you how I used fear in my life to overcome this difficult position where I wanted to know how to talk to my kids. And these are the points that I used to navigate these difficult waters. And I wasn't perfect, but these things helped a lot. The first thing that I did was be open about the pain and difficulty of this transition. It's not only hard for me, it's hard for the kids. And sometimes we want to shelter them so that we don't allow them to feel the pain that we're struggling with. But it's important for the kids to see that it's okay to be suffering after the breakup of a long-term relationship. It's important for them to see that you cared. It's important for them to know that this, what they saw between their parents was a real thing and that the pain that they feel is reflected in you. But as important as that is, point two is not to speak poorly of your spouse. Your children are half them. When you speak poorly about your spouse, it is as if you're putting them down. They feel that within their own hearts. It hurts them as if you're talking badly about them. Don't do it. There's nothing to be gained there. No matter how much that person has hurt you, no matter how much they've done, Avoid saying bad things about that person because then they're lost. They don't know what to do. They feel like a part of them is bad because they're connected to that person that you no longer love. The third thing is helping them navigate the different routines that are going to now happen between the two households. Kids are built on routine, right? You'll have as a couple, certain things that you have done together and done certain ways, and when you separate, you will begin to have different routines and different things. Kids will wonder, why is it okay to do this at your house and not okay to do it at mom's house, or vice versa, right? When that happens, you need to help them understand that differences of opinion in processes and how we do routines are not what undermine each other. Like it's, it's an important thing. If you can take a look at what is valuable in a person over the process or routine that they use to get to a place, it changes everything. I remember when I was in Japan, living there, I was so surprised at how differently the Japanese culture w acted than my North American culture that I grew up with. And I began to understand that they could accomplish just as much as me doing things the way they did as I did in my own way. And it opened my mind to new things. This is an opportunity to give your kids that, that insight where they can see mom and dad act differently in these ways, but they're still both moving towards a good place. Respect each other's different routines. Don't tear them down. So let me tell you kind of about what happened to me as I tried to do these things. It was hard. Uh, my breakup was difficult. There was a lot of hurt feelings on both sides, as most breakups do have. And my kids sided with their mother. And it was understandable that they did. I had done some things that I didn't feel were a good reflection of me as a man. And the pain that I had and the difficulties that I had were not things that, you know, I wanted to tell them about. I didn't want them to know about how I had been hurt and 
It wasn't important. What was important to me was that they felt loved and respected. But I got cut out of their lives for two years. My son, who I love all my kids, but my son was my oldest boy, my only boy, and we did a lot of things together. We would hike, we played music, we go to movies, we'd hang out, I, you know, we played basketball, we had a lot of activities, and I really missed having him in my life. I decided that I would just try to reach out to him as much as I could and tell him of things that I loved about him. And he is serving a mission for my, my church, or not my church, but the church that he's a part of. And in the process of serving his mission, uh, I decided it was an opportunity for me to write to him about what he was doing. And he's li he was living, he is currently living in Lisbon, Portugal. And I would write to him every week and tell him thoughts that I had about what he was up to and tell him how proud I was of him and never try to defend myself. In fact, I was apologetic for what I had done. And as I did this, I wondered, is he reading my letters? <laughs> Does he hear them? Does he care? Does he hate me? I didn't know. It was hard. I felt like I was talking to a wall. And at times I felt like I wanted to defend. And in fact, in one specific time, he did, he was kind enough to reach out to me and say, Dad, I still love you, but I don't know who you are and I can't reconcile who I thought you were with who you are. And then he said to me, and I want you to start taking care of my mom and my three sisters. And this hurt me. It was hard for me to hear because I have been doing so much to try to take care of them and struggling and giving them as much as I could. And that made me think like I was going to have to defend myself. My ego came up. I felt like, man, he needs to understand this. But in order for me to defend that position, I would have had to say things that I couldn't say to him. I would have had to say things about his mom that I can't say because they would make him feel hurt. <laughs> and I came, as I thought on this, and let my ego go, I realized that at the age of 17, when I was separated, when, when the marriage broke down and I left that home, he felt he had to take over as the man of the house. It was his job to step up, and he did. He did a great job. And I had no access to the children until I was given that through the courts for a time. And I wondered if I would ever see them again. And I wondered about how to engage with them. But when I got access, they wouldn't see me. They wouldn't want to. And um, he continued to take care of his sisters. And he continued to take care of his mom in the best way that he knew how. And that is a load that no 17-year-old kid should have to carry or face. And as I recognized that, honestly, I just felt so bad for my boy, who at 17 had to take on this load that is hard for any man to carry. And I apologized to him for putting him in that situation where he felt he had to be the man of the house. And I thanked him for doing a good job. And I let him know that I loved him. And I let it be, and I continue to write him, and he continued to stay silent until really, honestly, two weeks ago, from the time that I'm shooting this video right now, it was on my birthday, and I was out with my daughter, and we're eating at the restaurant, and I'm getting messages. I typically don't check my messages that often when I'm with people, but it was my birthday, and I was getting lots of messages wishing me a happy birthday. And I looked in my messages that I got as the um, waitress was taking away the check we were paying to leave. And there's a message from my son. And he told me how much he missed me. And he told me that he loved me. And he told me of all the times he remembered the things that we did together. And it was the most beautiful thing that I was able to see that he was finally able to start to work through the pain that he had felt 
and the difficulty that he had in the fallout of this relationship, which is as real for him as it was for me. And I was so glad that he was able to remember the good stuff and know that I know I slipped up. I know I said things maybe that I shouldn't have said, but I said very little. <laughs> and I know that I talked about my pain, maybe not in the best way at times, but I was able to navigate with respect and honor what their mother does for them and let them be in the space that they needed to be. And because of that, he's coming back to me. If I had raged against him, all of the injustice that I felt, I don't think I'd have him back with me and communicating with me as he has done since that day. So hold on to these things. Be respectful of your kids. Let them feel your pain. Let them know that you love them and that none of this impacts who you, how you feel about them. And I think even if you lose your kids, like I did, they'll come back to you. So if you feel like this is something that resonates with you, you might like this video, How to Feel Worthy of Love. It's something that we often struggle with, particularly in the dissolution of a marriage. And if you like what you see, like, subscribe, click on the bell so you don't miss any more content. I'm James Burnham. Thanks for hanging out with me. Here's that video on how to feel worthy. Make sure not to miss it. Check it out.